Chapter 27, Maniac McGee. The story he told now was not about baseball. It was about parents who were drunk a lot and always leaving him on his own. About being put in classes where they just cut paper and played games all day. About a teacher who whispered to a principal just outside the classroom door. This bunch will never learn to read a stop sign. Right then and there, as if to make the teacher right, he stopped trying. The part I didn't tell you, the part I didn't tell about Bluefield was I was only 15. I ran away. The kid and the old man climbed into a pickup. They made three stops. First, they stopped by the park office at the zoo where Grayson told the superintendent he just wanted to work part-time for a while in the afternoons. Fine, said the super, superintendent, just so don't you expect to get full-time pay. When they went to the library book sale and brought out 20 picture books such as The Story of Babar, Mike McGullen's Steam Shovel, and The Little Engine That Could, they went to Woolworths for a small portable blackboard and a piece of chalk. Within three days, Grayson had the alphabet down pat, the shapes, the sounds. After a week, he could read 10 one-syllable words, but he was reading them from memory. It took another couple of weeks before he began to get the hang of sounding out words that he had never seen before. The old man showed an early knack for consonants. Sometimes he got M and N mixed up, but the only one that gave him trouble day in and day out was C. It reminded of a Brock some cowboy dared to ride in his Texas League days. He would saddle up that C, climb aboard the Grimp and Pommel for dear life, and the old C, more often than not, would throw him. Whenever that happened, he'd just climb right back on and ride her some more. Pretty soon, C saw who was boss and gave up the fight. But even at their orneriest, consonants were fun. Fowls were something else. He didn't like them, and they didn't like him. There were only five of them, but they seemed to be everywhere. Why could you go through 20 words without bumping into some of the shyer consonants? But it seemed as if you couldn't tiptoe past the syllable without waking up a vowel. Consonants you knew pretty much were there, were there where they stood. But you could never trust a vowel. To the old pitcher, they were like his own best knuckleball come back to haunt him. In, out, up, down, not even the pitcher, much less the batter, knew which way it would break. He kept swinging and missing. But the kid was a good manager and tough. He would never let him slink back into the showers, but he kept sending him back up to the plate. The kid used different words, but in his ears the old minor league, the old minor leaguer heard, keep your eye on it, hold your swing, watch it in all the way, don't be anxious, just make contact. And soon enough, that's where he was doing, nailing those vowels on the button, writing them from consonant to consonant, syllable to syllable, word to word. One day the kid wrote on the blackboard, I see the ball. The old man studied it a while and said slowly, gingerly, I see the ball. Maniac whooped, you're reading. I am reading, yipped the old man. His smile was so wide, he'd have to break it into sections to fit it through a doorway. <laughs>